Octagon and the Swiss always change their names when they come and infiltrate another country. As the Hoovers did changing their names into Hoover, as US President Herbert Hoover and FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover, better known as Gay Edgar Hoover, as General Eisenhower, as General Custer, whose real name was Kusta with a K, and many, many others. The very same thing the Swissies did in South Africa, this time not anglifying their names, but making them sound Dutch, just as the Boer names. Well, here you can see uh, how the, these names, they are definitely not Swiss, or Swiss German, or whatever. They have been changed like sounding like Dutch. This is what they do. So you can see some more. This is what the Swiss always do. They come and settle down in your country while keeping a low profile smile and multiply and organizing their secret lodges. Then they change their names into English or whatever. Then they go for the key positions in politics, army, police and justice. And then they'll tell you what to do in your country while robbing your savings with their banks. And uh, well, here we can see some more. This is what they always did, and it worked out pretty well. Now being the richest country in the world, and always made sure that all the wars happened elsewhere. The Swiss themselves call them the Swiss Community Abroad, or in German OAS, Organisation der Auslandsschweizer, and even refer to them as the Fifth Switzerland, just as a fifth column which is the international expression for sleeper agents, to which Wikipedia refers to as a group of people who undermine a larger group, such as a nation or a besieged city from within. So here you can read some more about this. Let's see it. Even an address and a telephone number. And here you can see it's the fifth Switzerland. That's how they call the Swissies abroad. This is a fifth column, folks. The Swiss sleeper agents. They even say it themselves. Uh, they're very dangerous. This is octagon. There's no doubt that the word fifth column finds its origins here and not in Spain during the Civil War or something though of course the Spanish people were betrayed all the time by Octagon Templar agents and attacked by the Nazi Templar Condor Legion so here you can see in, uh, in Wikipedia so fifth column or fifth Switzerland is a group of people who undermine a larger group, such as a nation or a besieged city, from uh, within. So here you can read it all. This is how they octagon conquers the world from within, the enemy within. Now, why fifth, as in fifth column or fifth Switzerland? Because there are four Switzerlands inside octagon. One German speaking part in order to undermine the peoples to the north, one French to the west, one Italian for the south, and one retro Romanic or Romanche language. So here we can see the green where they speak French, 
Well, this is the only part of Switzerland where they have an independence movement. It's called Jura, because after the it's looked like a rough, you know, it's outside of Switzerland. And uh, here, the most part, well, they speak German. And here they speak Italian, and this here it's called Romance. It might be an old Roman language of the Rome of former Roman legionnaires who settled down here as the Swiss have been murdering and killing people all over always. And we can see it looks like a uh, it looks like a pig. Here's the mouth, here's the tail. A little dirty pig it is. And uh, so these ones here, you know, they undermine the people to the south. And here they can go to the west and here they go to the north because they speak German. And all these cantons, you you find well, 80% of the names in the um, in the phone book are German, or at least 50. Well, here in the French-speaking part, even in, in Geneva, which is here, you find them all German names. And here as well, a lot of German names, and here in the Romance part as well. And the Italian-speaking Swiss, well, they're, they're not at all like the Italians, I tell you. They look down upon the Italians, and the French-speaking Swiss. Well, it's the same. They look down upon the upon the French workers who come every day to work in Switzerland. So this is why. And then there's the. Uh, so here are four languages. Four. We could say four Switzerlands, and the fifth Switzerland. Well, now we know the fifth column. And so the fifth. Switzerland or fifth column is to undermine any other country and language of preference. So here you can see the fifth column in the US. Well, we are in the thousand year Reich. Just think of Hoover, J. Edgar Hoover, Eisenhower. Well, they're all Swissies taking key positions in America. I don't think they're gone. Don't you think they're gone? Here's your Nazi fifth column. And they're still in power. This is Octagon of Switzerland. And here you can see the uh, travel publicity of Swiss Coop Vesica Peitzer's uh, supermarket. There you go. About some traveling in Costa Rica. So it's about Swiss territories in Costa Rica, which they call Pequeña Helvetia, or Little Switzerland, just as in Argentina, where Hitler went to. So this is how they attract some more Swiss fifth columns to come and live here. It's really appalling. So here it says again, they call it the Switzerland of the, uh, the middle of Central America. It's already their territory. They, it's like the fifth Switzerland. They just take it over. Here's some more fifth column. Well, why do you think there's the Templar V behind of Octagon, eh? So this is a clothing company. Well, they know exactly what they're doing, I tell you. Just making business. Well, the Nazis went into business afterwards. And then if you buy it, you're carrying... Their strategy on your t-shirt, on your breast, on your back. Isn't that funny? Funny enough, the Swiss OAS reminds us of the French OAS, meaning Organisation Armée Secrète, meaning the organization of the secret army during the Algeria war, who even tried to kill General de Gaulle. Well, we know that François Junoux, the grey eminence of Octagon, he had a lot of things to do with the OAS, Organisation Armée Secrète, in uh, Algeria. So there is a connection, don't worry. So here you go, it's about the Algerian War. OAS, the secret army organization. And François Junot, Jan Machart, Hitler's banker, Alan Dulles, all funny people. And it was a Freemasonry organization, together with um, uh, François Mitterrand. 
and uh, de Gaulle he wanted to give the independence to Algeria and this organization opposed to that so OAS do you think it's a coincidence really that the name OAS has the same letters as the, it's the same abbreviation as the organization of the Swiss fifth column the organization of the Swiss community no it's not it's all Swiss Jalmar Schacht, he was the head of the, the Bank of International Settlements through which they stole the American savings of the uh, Black Tuesday, the Wall, Wall Street crash. We got Junou, Alan Dulles, he was all the time in Geneva during the war, the head of the, uh, the OSS. <laughs> it's all SS, OSS. You know. It's all octagon. Don't be worried. It's all octagon. It's all Swiss related. It's the fifth column. They're ruling the US. They're ruling the whole world. Wakey, wakey. And for their fifth Switzerland column, they have the ASR, the Ausland Schweizer Rat, or Swiss Abroad Board, inside the Swiss government to provide assistance to their fifth column of Swiss sleeper agents of Octagon all over the world. So here we can see those who can read German. It says the fifth, the fifth Switzerland, the fifth column. These are like secret lodges. We don't know what's going on. So this is in German. So here you can listen to the Swiss mayor of uh, Cape Town. He's speaking Swissy language. Ich bin Geschäftsmann, bin aber auch in der lokalen Politik tätig. Von 1987 bis 1989 bin ich Stadtpräsident Bürgermeister von dieser Stadt gewesen. Ich werde jetzt Ihnen ein bisschen etwas von meiner Stadt zeigen. So he says it's my town and he was the mayor. Oh nice, eh? <laughs> so here's some more of these guys here, if you fancy reading it. So this guy here, Peter Muller, he's Swiss, he even speaks Swiss German. He was the mayor of Cape Town. And he's still ruling it. He calls it my town. I saw an interview. He calls it my town. My, my South Africa. <laughs> there you can read it. He even got his email there. So these are the guys Octagon, the fifth column. These are the guys uh, Edward Snowden is really working for. Edward Snowden belongs to the Swiss fifth column. He was assigned to spy on the Swiss banks and he didn't. So now they're using him against the US. This guy is a traitor. He's very dangerous. It's extremely dangerous. And that's the fifth column. I have no doubts at all that Edward Snowden, he's of Swiss ancestry. Just look it up and find it out. Go to the uh, the Mormons. They all, they, they got a register of all the people where they come from. Edward Snowden is of Swiss descent, I tell you. He's got the same, like, innocent Swiss, Swissy face. This is Octagon. This is how they work. And today, 2014, there are 732,183 Swissies living abroad who have not entirely submerged yet and still have their original names, identities and Swiss nationality, who hope to get a better immigrant treatment than the immigrants do in Switzerland. Here we can see the number. It's almost a million. So these are the ones who haven't got, who are not submerged yet, but they belong to the fifth column already. So there must be, I don't know how many millions, they're all over. Oh, there you go, you can read the whole article if you like. The Swissies want to make the world their own. 
Well, when you, as a foreigner, settle inside the motherland of Octagon, you have to deal with Swiss gangster rule by a very unanimous people, like these Swiss gangsters of their Swiss Nazi police came and put three guns on my head for gangsters' intimidation, and no legal re reason at all. How they lie things together to put immigrants in prison and how they torture and terrorize with no end. And simultaneously, these 700,000 Swiss abroad get well treated. And there are more than just these 700,000. I mean, these are the ones who are still Swiss. I don't know how many, 20 million? Let's have, let's have a pick. 30 million? Now you can read the whole article if you like. You have Roger Federer. It's the same Swiss South African. Yeah, this is interesting about the red lights. Listen what they say. Yeah. They even say, like here, the Swiss are like red lights. You find them everywhere. This is what they say about themselves, that they are, in fact, everywhere. They know it. You know, they really know it. I know exactly what they're doing. Now let's see how Octagon took over control of South Africa and had all their Swissies imported. Since the Crusades and since the founding of Switzerland on August 1st, 1291 by the Templars, the Swiss man had a tradition of serving as mercenaries for the European aristocracy of the pharaohs. Right, you can read the all here. So after the Thirty Year War in 1648 and murdering two-thirds of the German population, they went and served the Dutch king amongst other pharaohs. As the Dutch navy ended the Thirty Year War by sinking the Spanish and Portuguese galleons full of Inca gold to pay off the mercs. So immediately after, in 1652, like four years after the end of the uh, Thirty Year War, uh, South Africa could be founded in 1652 by Jan van Riebeek at Cape of Good Hope. It says service in the Dutch army, modern times, all over. And in 1694, only 46 years after the Thirty Year War, 5,000 Swiss mercs served in the King's Army of the Lowlands, who were 11,200 in 1702, 20,400 in 1748, until Napoleon invaded the Netherlands in 1795. And altogether, an estimated 150,000 Swiss mercs served in the Dutch army, as the Dutch themselves were more like sailors, traders and merchants, who didn't fancy military business very much. Thus explaining who the notorious South African mercs really were later on in history. Yes, of Swiss origin and not Dutch or real boars. Until today, the Swissies have an uninterrupted mercenary tradition. I mean, this is General Costa in Africa all over again. Same story. Now, here's some more about the Swiss mercs. I mean, it's still going on today. I mean, this is executive outcome of South African mercs. And the, uh, the Blackwater guy, his name is Prince, well, now we know he's probably not Dutch, but of Dutch descent, but uh, one of those Swiss mercs 
who stay there or in, 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 in the low countries. It's still going on today. The whole mercenary business is Swiss. It always has been Swiss and it always will be Swiss. This is Octagon. Whether it's Blackwater, Executive Outcome or all the others, it's Swiss. And all these Merck companies, they have a letterbox uh, firm in Switzerland, in Octagon. So they don't pay any taxes. Well, you don't want to pay US taxes, do you now? Or very high British taxes. Uh, yeah. So this is quite interesting. Here it says, there are known cases where the recruitment business was run by the wives. Well, these are the sisters of Isis. You know, a lot of women in it. Oh, the men, they go fighting and killing, and the sisters of Isaac, well, you go there and you go here. The same thing I can see here today. There's a lot of Swiss women. And uh, there, there are some real witches here, I, I can tell you. And they tell the police to go somewhere and arrest a foreigner. They say, this is a, this is a dangerous foreigner, go and arrest him. We are so afraid of him. So they manipulate the man. And this is still going on in Switzerland today. They lie and they cheat. They're very extremely racist. They think they're better than the rest. This is going on in Switzerland today. When I go out here, there's a lot of women. If I would walk out of the house, there's a lot of women, you know, like sitting at home or, and they, uh, they just call up the police, you know, the neighbors. I don't have to go out for two minutes and I got the police running after me. This is Switzerland, and here you can see it. The Swiss Merck's business was run by the women. The Sisters of Isis of Switzerland. And it's all pharaonic in the end anyway. Then the Templars VOC, or Dutch East India Company, with their Templars V logo, needed Marines and Mercs to kill the black man in the Cape area. Well, the Templars VOC had a revitalizing stop so the sailors could rest for a month and take fresh vegetables and fresh meat from the farmers or boars, which is a Dutch name for a farmer and Swiss German name, after four months sailing from Amsterdam to Cape Town and a lot of men suffering from scurvy or lack of vitamin C and other vitamins on their voyage to the East Indies, now called Indonesia. The um, average death rate on the voyage from Amsterdam to Cape Town was 6%. And over the years, from 1610 to 1794, 1 million people sailed from the Netherlands to South Africa, and among them a whole lot of Swiss mercs, maybe up to around 150,000 men, thus explaining the tradition of South African mercs today which we find in no other country in the entire world. So here we see the logo, the Templars logo, the Templars V. Well, why do you think they put it there, eh? Well, it was all from Switzerland in, in the first place. You know? That's why they invited the... Uh, after the 30-year war, the Swiss Mercs didn't have anything more to do. So they went to Holland because the Templars set up the fleet there. It's all in the logos, you know, you can't be mistaken. They even show it. The proofs are there, folks. And the Templars are found at Switzerland. They don't even think we're so stupid. They don't even hide it. Well, we are stupid. Yeah. That's why in the army you say kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. So, here's some more about the Dutch East India Company. Well, you can skip the Dutch, actually. They were, they were just the sailors. It's all Templar stuff. It's Swiss. It's Octagon. And these guys, and most of all the Dutch West India, India Company, and then the English started doing it as well, they were the ones, these Templars, who brought the, uh, the African slaves to America. It's all Templar stuff. 
This is the, the Swiss fifth column. They did it. It's all multinational companies and they hide under another nationality. That's how they do it. And nobody thinks about Switzerland because it's so neutral and clean and they hide behind this nice smile. You know, but it's all Templar stuff. Well, look at the flag here. It's a Templar's V. The Templars brought the slaves to America. Listen up, my black brothers, if there's any Black Panthers listening. Well, come and contact me. We'll do something about it. Oh, there you go, breaking the silence. Well, that's what I do. I break the silence. The slave roots here. The Swiss don't like me to break the silence. They'll probably come around with the police again. Or the Swiss women here, they 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 call up the police and then they're, they're mercenaries, they're men, and say, well, oh, this, this foreigner, he talks bad about Switzerland. We must arrest him again, you know. That's how they do it. This is the heart of evil. It's octagon and it's pharaonic from the beginning. Now, there you go again, the Dutch West India Company. They brought the first slaves to uh, New York. Well, you saw the Templar symbol, so they're not really Dutch. And, uh, well, the uh, the Templars, the Octagon, the Swiss Templars, they brought the, uh, they bought the slaves from the Arabs. And now I want you to think about the uh, the Nazis and the, the Islam connection. Well, not all of Islam, but some of them. Like uh, Amin al-Husseini and uh, François Junot. So this thing, together with Octagon, the Templar Nazis, and the um, the Islamo slave connection, as the word for a uh, black man and a slave in Arabic is Abd, where the word Abdullah it means the slave of Allah. So all the black men they were they were slaves. Um, yeah. So here is already the connection between the uh, uh, this 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 face of of the Muslims. Uh, in spite of the fact that they say, well, we're all brothers and things like that. But, you know, people now people are dying, you know, constructing the, um, uh, the, the, the World Soccer uh, Stadium in, uh, in some um, Arab uh, Emirates. They have a lot of slaves or even Muslims. And they don't get any wages. They die as flies today in 2014. So, um, yeah, nice. And actually, there's a lot of propaganda, and you know, by the Nazis uh, on the internet, and um, even black people, they think that they believe this stuff that they, you know, about the Zionists and that they are the uh, the enemy of the world. Well, I don't give a rat's ass if you want to believe it, but I I do care. You miss the real enemy. This is Octagon, the Templars. This is the real enemy. And the Zionists, I tell you, my black brothers, if you want to believe all that. The Zionists stopped black slaves in Palestine because the Palestinians, Palestinians, they had a lot of black slaves or apts. So you better be thankful that the, that the Zionists they stopped this uh, this uh, Palestinian tradition or this Muslim tradition of having black slaves. Just think, you know, think and use your head and look at the proofs and history. It was Zionism that stopped black slavery in Palestine yeah so most of the or maybe all the um, the mercenary companies they are based in Switzerland because of the taxes so here is Eggies they are in Switzerland you can even find the address somewhere they got a letterbox company but the uh, the offices are in London so mercenary companies as executive outcome did send their South African mercs all over Africa and they were hired by blacks to kill other blacks. But of course the blacks in the government were and are pharaohs of the aristocracy who hired the Swiss South African mercs from Octagon to do the job. While well, bad habits die hard, don't they now? And this is why Nelson Mandela and the new South African government never did a single thing 
against these white mercs from South Africa roaming over the entire African continent because Nelson Mandela came from a royal African Per A family of rulers and he was a Freemason. This is why he got invited to see the Queen. Or does anyone think that some average Negroid can drink tea with the Queen like that? And this convict with 27 years in prison become head of state just like that? Well, I tell you, this guy didn't do a single day in prison and he doesn't give a damn about the black population as he himself was part of the big pharaonic family of the Per A big house. And here you can see him like wearing the, uh, the Templar's cross, the same one as, um, as, the, as the, 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 the slave ships of the VOC. They had the Templar's V on the, in their logo who brought black slaves to the Americas. So you think this guy really cares about the black population of Africa? Or he's part of them? No, he's not. And the Pharaoh is so proud of his Templar's cross. Even here on a, on a South African stamp. And here he's sitting with some other Pharaohs of some other Per A dynasty. I think this is Sweden or something. Now you see this here, sometimes it's red, sometimes it's blue, you know, like the other royals. This is a sign of the symbol of the pharaohs. So you can see Mandela is of a royal Per A pharaonic family. That explains it, that he was invited by all the other royals, you know. So one of the king's sons named Mandela became Nelson Mandela's grandfather and the source of his name. Yeah. So this is in uh, Wikipedia. Well, here you can see Mandela, he was born into a royal family, the uh, Tembu tribe, Ikshosa. So they're all pharaohs together, you see. A royal pharaoh. Well, remember the pharaohs, they were all over Africa before they went to Europe, you know, so, yeah. This is typical pharaonic, isn't it? Yeah. So, this is why the European royals, they like him. You know, you can read it all here. Yeah. Uh, well, find it out yourself. A pharaonic necklace. So in South Africa, the persecuted Europeans were forced to live side by side with their Swiss persecutors without knowing so. As the Swiss and the Mercs always keep tight. The real Boers are a mixture of French Huguenots, German Protestants and mostly Dutch Calvinists. All of them persecuted in Europe for religious reasons and massacred during the Thirty Year War by these same Swiss Mercs who now found themselves all together in South Africa. And this is why the Boers lost the Boer Wars against the British Army, because at every battle they got betrayed by the Swiss Mercs, who by that time spoke Afrikaans and had a Dutch sounding Boer name, altogether being the second time they got betrayed by the same Swiss persecutors of the, of the fifth column from Octogon. And the third time was when Swiss de Klerk sold South Africa out to the ANC. The old bunch of Freemasons anyway. Well, de Klerk is a member of the Afrikaner Brother Bond. A Freemason organization. Yeah, there he is, de Klerk. Just, uh, it's still the VOC. Well, this is their logo. You see the pyramid ruling over the world. You know, the pharaohs ruling over the world. It's the same sort of, same lodge as uh, Nelson Mandela. He was part of another lodge. You know. It says be strong in Afrikaans. So that means be strong by togetherness, you know. The Freemason... Uh, 
and apparently this is also the brother bond this looks like a the uh, fleur de lis the lotus flower of the nile the two s's meaning isis here's a v symbol well, at that time the boars had a great seer Sina van Rensburg which almost sounds like Sinner van Rensburg but he was quite the opposite and not a sinner and uh, if the Boers would have listened to the last known prophet then the Boers would have won the war and the Boer women and children wouldn't have been massacred 28,000 women and mostly children in British concentration camps of Pharaoh as Lord Kitchener and Lord Frederick Slay Roberts of the fair aristocracy ordered this evil massacre on defenceless children with the Duke Winston Churchill also roaming around at the same time and place adding his bit in the massacre. So this is the fair, this is the fair aristocracy, Lord Kitchener, Lord Slay Roberts, the old pharaohs or part of the big pharaonic Per A big house family for whom in fact the Swiss mercenaries always did the job for them until today if you look at Blackwater and an executive outcome I recognize how Sina saw pharaonic symbols in his visions as for him a house meant a government which relates directly with the pharaonic Per A big house of rule and he sees an ox or a cow for a country which definitely relates to the Apis bull and defending and defining the country's borders and this is by the way why in English one says sunset for nightfall where Set or Seth is the pharaonic lord of darkness who rules the night Sun Seth or Sunset. Well, there it is again, just as Mandela. The same pharaonic sharp here as the royals. It's all the same bunch. And why do you think Paul Kruger died in Octogon, Switzerland in 1904? Claron. He was the first president of South Africa and a Boer general just as Swiss General Dwight D. Eisenhower was Swiss. And why didn't Paul Kruger go to the Netherlands instead when the Boers are supposed to be Dutch settlers? Well, because they aren't. Most of the Boers are Swiss mercs who came out of the Dutch military service to South Africa with Octagon's Templar ships of the VOC. The Boers are not like the Dutch at all. Their English accent sounds like a Bernese from Switzerland trying to speak English. The Dutch are no racists as the Boers and the Swiss have those white superiority um, beliefs of white supremacy. The Swiss and the Boers like guns, rifles and pistols. The Dutch are more into smoking marijuana instead and the Boers only speak some backwarded Dutch as only an immigrant from Switzerland would as a Swiss mercenary from Octagon. Even the word Boer is pronounced the exact same way as in Bernese Swiss German as where most of the Swiss mercs came from and in the 20th century we don't see any close ties between Holland and the Boers but there is between Swiss Nazis and the Boers during the apartheid era and all the crimes committed. So the Boers have all the Swiss characteristics and no Dutch ones at all. This is the way Octagon sleeper agents hide and they are everywhere and more widespread than red lies as the Swissies even say themselves. And when I was in the SADF in 1981 during the border wars they had restricted areas where they had rows of black people hanging upside down from the trees with a bucket underneath. So after a few days some slimy stinking substance dropped down from their noses, which they had dried in the sun and grinded into a powder, which had all the DNA information of death in it. 
They called it the Death Powder and probably had it from Octogon, the motherland from the Sisters of Isis, or some pharaonic death cult formula. And just a little bit in the glass of a political adversary would do for a natural death. They even put it in wells and wiped out entire villages. And at this point, I decided to desert the army and South Africa forever. Now, a strange cause of destiny brought me to the motherland of evil, where prisoners as Roger Fankhauser get natural caused inside Swiss torture centers, and I recognize so clearly that this way of sneaky assassinations are so typically Swiss, as these Nazi Templars from Octagon hide all their hideous Nazi crimes against humanity behind this impregnable impenetrable Swiss smile. Well, what else can you expect from these mercenaries who sell their services to the highest bidder? Of course it was them who betrayed the real Dutch boors to have their children murdered in concentration camps of the fair aristocracy and their lords of darkness, just as these Swissies financed Adolf Hitler and consequently the concentration camps. Octagon is everywhere. They don't integrate, go for all key positions, organize in Swiss lodges, change their names and then impose their laws on you and send their Octagon police to come and get you.